What's going on guys, Agrahex here, and I am your coach of the Cork City Credit Leagues. Today I'm bringing you a video uh, press conference just to talk about our season, uh, how this has gone. I think this is definitely uh, a very, very successful season for me as a coach of Cork City Credit Leagues, and uh, I'm very, very happy with how the season has gone. If you guys don't know, uh, we recently played Swishy, the Green Bay Gigging Gorgeist. Uh, we were told if we got a full row or higher, we were guaranteed playoffs. We got a 6-0. We are in the playoffs. First round will be against Sourcing. I'll be going up very, very soon for you guys. Either on Friday or someday out during the weekend. Um, and I'm very, very excited for that match. I've already team prepped. I'm already ready, 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 ready to go. So, I just wanted to bring you guys a little video talking about what I think of the season. What do I think about our draft? What do I think about our team? Uh, the surprise... Uh, mons that did better than I thought they would uh, some of the MVPs and some of the mons that didn't uh, Do as well as I hoped they would and some mons that did even better than I ever imagined. So uh, we're gonna jump into it This is the roster uh, right now. Uh, we have Agron, Dragonite, Milotic, Sylveon, Superior, Helilisk, Zatu, Venomoth, Golurk, Girder, and Mok uh, So I'm gonna go into detail on each of them and I have their nicknames and their forms because uh, you know I always like you know, shiny for this guy, shiny for this guy, shiny for this guy, but not for this guy, not for this guy, not for this guy. Uh, so you know what I mean. So we're going to start with our captain, Agron. And Agron has been fantastic this season. Now, he's not done as well as I hoped he would, but that's really down to me. But the last few weeks, Agron has definitely been a rock of our team. If there's ever a man that we need to take a hit, he's always there. And he's always there to really put pressure on my opponent because while Agron can take a hit, he dishes out massive amounts of damage. You know, 140 base attack is really, really good. And I feel like Agron was definitely, uh, definitely the captain. Uh, MVP, not quite. Uh, definitely due to me, but against Swishy, he was, able, he was able to just wall out the Landers and the Scammer at the end, beating both of them. Um, it, it def I definitely misplayed it against Sorsen. Uh, I misplayed it a little bit against Joey. Um, it uh, didn't do as much as I wanted with Bloom, but I wanted to be safe and sack it off. Uh, what did it do great against? It definitely did fantastic against Porygod, able to beat in the t the Mill Tank and the Metagross. Agron was able to come through in that battle our first week. Uh, it didn't do as well as I hoped it would against Zack. Not really its fault, more my fault. Uh, letting it die to an Earthquake. Uh, sorry, I no, what was it? A superpower from uh, Scizor that was Choice Bandit in the end. I was expecting it to be possibly uh, Expert Belt or maybe even Leftovers, but it was uh, Choice Bandit. So, Agron definitely, definitely hasn't done it as much as it could have done, but that really done that has, that has been down to me. But, Agron has been done... Oh my god, I can't even speak. Agron has done fantastically. It's definitely a Pokemon that my opponents find it hard to work past, you know? If you don't have a Mon that can burn it or that can... You know, just do loads of damage. Because you can't poison Aggron, which is one of the best things about Aggron. You cannot poison it uh, because of its steel typing. And because of that, it's just able to sit on the field and really, really stare down my opponent's team. And it's definitely made my opponents think differently. And because of that, a lot of the fairy types like Bloom's Togekiss, Joey's Aromatisse, um, uh, Sorosin's Mega Adina that we're going to be playing soon. I don't know if he'll bring the Adina, but we'll see. Um, what else? Zach's. Uh, Mega Altaria, you know, Agron has been able to just stand in front of them and been able to just wall them out. And Amon, unless it's defensive, nothing's really swapping in on Agron, which is the best thing about it. I've definitely learned over the course of this season that Agron is not a defensive Pokemon. He's more of a bulky offense, but he will take hits for you. He's a swap in that hits something in on a swap in. And I think I've learned that's what Agron does. And uh, hopefully I'll apply that during the playoffs. Um, and man, using your favorite Pokemon to s success is just so rewarding. And uh, Agron, I love you, man. I love you. Uh, next, we have Dragonite Spyro, who has been done doing fantastically over the season. Start of the season, we weren't able to use it week one. Um, we were able to use it against Zack, Choice Bandit. It didn't do as much as I wanted, but that was definitely down to my uh, plays. I definitely should have just played better with Dragonite. I definitely messed up. In a few crucial moments, I definitely could have won with Dragonite at the end if I did play better during the middle part of the game, but that was definitely down to me. Uh, Dragonite was huge, gets Bloom being able to Hurricane the Venusaur, get a huge 77% off, uh, and that was massive because no one sees Special Dragonite coming, but 100 Special Attack is really, really that bad. You know, 100 Special Attack is honestly very, very good, and the fact that 
I've been bringing Dragonite specially offensive a lot the, the, the last few weeks. I've definitely been doing it against Swishy. It was mixed with Dragonglon, Dragonmeter, catching the wheezing off guard, catching the Skarmory with a Fire bla Blast. Even though it didn't actually use Fire Blast, I definitely had it there. So if Dragonite was able to, you know, come in, if something died, Dragonite was de definitely able to get up the kill. Um, Dragonite was huge this season, and it was definitely a very, very scary mod for my opponents. And it didn't do as well as I hoped it would. Uh, definitely down to me again. Um, like Joey was uh, scared of a dragon dancing Dragonite. The second he saw it was special, he was fine because he had a special, the specially defensive uh, Steelix, specially defensive Aromatisse, and specially defensive Rotom Heat. So, in that regard, I definitely misplayed Dragonite uh, in a, f a few games. But you like your losses are always going to stand out in your mind, you know, the first time. But looking back at the amount of work Dragonite did, you know, it was able to do well against uh, Frank, uh, able to use Dragonite to beat, uh, you know, the Toxic Croak and stuff. Golark was definitely the MVP in that match, but I'll get to that in a while. Uh, Dragonite was able to put a lot of offensive pressure onto Bloom, onto Swishy, um, onto Joey if I didn't mess up, uh, honestly. Um, you know, I, I was very, very good. Again, it didn't, wasn't able to come first week because it's Mega Megros. Scaramory, Celebi, but looking back, dude, special Dragonite could have come that week. But um, I definitely learned over the season what Dragonite does uh, and the different ways of using it. The same as Aggron, not just use the same old strategy. Like, we use special Dragonite, which you really, really honestly never see. Uh, and Bulky Roost was definitely my form uh, with Dragonite because we didn't have a, a successful Rapid Spinner. I'll get to that in a while. But uh, we didn't have a great Rapid Spinner. We didn't have any Rapid Spinner except for Hitmonlee for a small while. That's why Roost was definitely more... Um, useful than Dragon Nets. But um, next, we have, in my opinion, the MVP for the Cork City Credulous. We have Ariel the Melodic. She is so beautiful. She has been doing fantastically this season. Now, Melodic, it's funny. Melodic, in the three games that we lost, Melodic didn't come. Every other game that we uh, played, we won. And Melodic was always there. Now, I'm not going to say that's because we lost because I didn't bring Melodic. That's silly. But it, it says something, doesn't it? It really, really says something when you don't bring a Pokemon for three weeks. Those are the only three games you lose. You bring it to every other week, and it does fantastically. That really, really speaks volumes to me. And um, Milotic was definitely the MVP of the season. It did fantastically this season. Able to come in against, um, let's see, able to beat the Entei against Bloom, which was huge. Able to beat the Skarmory and the Weezing for Swishy and the Landorus, which was huge. Uh, what else? Um, against Frank, it was very, very hard for him to get past once Zapdos died. And he was able to come in on the Latias over and over again. And against the Charizard especially. Uh, against Porygod, he was able to sit in front of the Skarmory. His only answer was, um, I believe, Celebi. Uh, it was very, very good. I think Milotic was incredibly valuable to our team. And uh, let us I didn't even talk about it. Our six pads battle, Milotic came through at the end, Six Baz making a team building miss prep and brought Ice Beam instead of Psychic, so we were able to wall the Lucario and wall the Mew and Milotic. Same as Aggron coming into the last two, being able to beat them out. And that's definitely what I learned over the season. It's Milotic's job, being able to wall out the Mons mid game and then being able to just sit at the end of the game like Aggron and just beat the last few Mons because they won't be able to get past. And hopefully, I apply that strategy in the playoffs when we play Sorcerer and hopefully when we play Joey. Um, so Milotic was definitely MVP this season, and um, I'm just I'm just I'm just upset that I wasn't able to use it every because Agron, listen to this guys, Agron came every single week for the Cork City Credit Leagues. Milotic came six battles, Dragonite came six or seven I believe, maybe eight. I don't I think it didn't come against Porygod, and I think that might have been it actually. No 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 sorry, uh, Dragonite came against Porygod. Hmm, I think Dragonite might have come came every week as well. I'm trying to think of a week there it didn't come. No, I think it, I did. I do think it came every week. But Melodic, the only games we didn't bring it to, uh, we lost. So that definitely speaks volumes. And then next we have our other huge member of the team. Tinkerbell the Sylveon was incredible this season. Now I got a lot of flack from people. Well, one person really. Sorsen was definitely, definitely. Um, he was saying that, you know, Offensive Sylveon is great. And Offensive Sylveon, believe me, Offensive Sylveon is fantastic. You know, you know, Hyper Voice Choice Specs Pixelate is great. But 
that's not why I drafted Sylveon. And the reason I did draft Sylveon was to take hits, special hits, physical hits. You know, surprisingly enough, to take a lot of physical hits. Sylveon did fantastically this season. Like, honest to God, it ate up hits from, let's see... Uh, he got a little bit unlucky from Gallade, you know, against Sorison, but other than that, he was able to beat the Cop Grigus, even kind of beat the Registeel. It took hits from the Lantern against Swishy, which was huge, and the Landorus. Um, it was able to wall them out, and the, especially the Mega Ampharos. Um, it was able to do fantastically against Six Pads. Uh, it did allow the Lucario set up, which was a misplay on my part, but in the end, it didn't matter. Um, I thought Sylveon did fantastically able to be a great wish supporter for the rest of my team and especially Agron who doesn't have any reliable recovery which is really, really annoying but because of Agron having rest and Sylveon getting a heal bell uh, it wasn't too big of an issue and uh, that's definitely what Sylveon was used for as a bulky defensive Pokemon to pair nicely up with Agron and uh, a lot of people d didn't like how I used it and you know what I used Sylveon how I was most comfortable using Sylveon and I think it did fantastic with the season. Uh, next we have William the Superior who definitely uh, did better than I was expecting. Now the reason I drafted Superior was to have some sort of grass type. Now there were so many choices in tier 2 uh, on my pick. You know I could have gone with Breloom, I could have gone with Chestnut, I could have gone with Tangrowth, I could have gone with Rotomo in tier 3. Um, you know there was just a lot of conflicting uh, Pokemon, you know, there. But at the end of the day, I wanted a fast Pokemon. I wanted a fast Pokemon, needed a Grass type. I had the points for a tier 2 Mon, I picked up Superior. And Superior did actually better than I thought it would. Now, it didn't do as well as it could have, that's my fault. But I wasn't expecting it to do great. I just picked up Superior because I needed an offensive Grass type, and I thought a Superior would be a cool Mon to use. I have a lot of experience using it, no you. So I thought, hey, what the heck. William did fantastically. He was able to put a lot of offensive pressure on Sorison. Unfortunately, uh, he brought Choice Scarf Volk Coronas. We weren't able to get past it. He put a lot of offensive pressure on Joey, especially being able to kill the Steelix. He brought in Jolteon, went for him by a rise. Assault Vest kicked in. Superior lived. One shot the Jolteon. Unfortunately, we had 12%, so he died to rocks. So when he brought in his Zangus, I didn't bother swapping out. I let William die. But William got two kills at the, in that game, which was great. Um, William definitely shined in those two games, even though he wasn't able to do anything else. He was definitely didn't do as much as I wanted him to do against Porygod. Um, and definitely didn't do as much as I wanted him to do against uh, Zack. Uh, his Blissey was just too much for me. We did get a very, very unlucky during the season. We missed a lot of Leaf Storms. But I, you know, it is, po it is what it is. It is what it is. Um, it is Pokemon. And you can't be upset about it. I think Superior was great. And, um, you know, I think if we do bring it to playoffs, I'm not sure if I will. But, um... I think, I think it might come some week, but we'll see, we'll see. Next we have Healerlisk. SBO the Healerlisk was fantastic. This was the MVP of week 8 against Bloom. It got 6 kills. 6 kills. It killed the Venusaur with that voice, killed Garchomp on a Hidden Power Ice swap in, killed the Tokyus with Thunderbolt I believe, it killed Entei with a Thunderbolt. Our Hyper Voice killed Alakazam with a Thunderbolt and killed Jellicent with a Thunderbolt. Healerlisk was fantastic in that match. But the rest of the season, it did very, very well as well. Now, Healerlisk definitely uh, didn't do as well as I wanted to against Sorosin because he didn't bring Suicune. And that's what I definitely learned over the season. You can't just prep for one Mon. And I definitely misplayed in that regard. Uh, you can't prep for just, like, four Mons. You have to prep for the whole team. And Healerlisk definitely sh uh, shone. In the mons that, in the games that I brought it to, because you know it was a bloom. It got six kills against Bloom. It was able to do huge against six pads, barely missing out on the kill on Heatran. Went for a surf, did about 44%. It was definitely um, unfortunate. We might have got a low roll. I didn't do the calc, didn't bother, and he killed it with Fire Blast, but he did kill himself with Life Orb damage. So Healer Risk in that regard did bring Heatran to the point where it would die. Um, it was huge in that regard. Um, against, uh, what else? Against Frank, he was huge, able to, uh, beat, um, oh, what was it? The Toxicroak, I believe. You know, Healerlisk is great. I love SBO, and I hope it, I do bring it to playoffs, and it does something. I don't know if I will, but, uh, we'll just have to see. Uh, next we have Shaman, 
who I brought for the first time against Swishy last week, and Shaman has been doing incredibly. Let me change this ability right here, because we all know what ability Zatu uses. Uh, now, Zatu was definitely a very, very odd pick for me. I needed a Defogger, I needed a Magic Bouncer, and I was so upset with myself with the rocks. So I picked it up in the bye week, and it did fantastic against Swishy. It's the only week we brought it to. Hopefully, I'll use it in the playoffs. I think it can come some week in the playoffs. Um, I don't think it'll come against Sorison. But I, I do think Zatu would be huge. And, um, you know, to just it gets it's, its moveset is really what it is. You know, Baton Pass, Combine is great if I want to drop Magic Bounce and I just want to use a Baton Passer. Giga Drain Grass, not Foul Play. Dazzling Gleam, Heat Wave. Obviously, the Hidden Powers, which is great. Every mon every special mon is able to take advantage of that. Shatter Ball, Signal Beam, Psy Shock, uh, Roost, Sucker Punch, Thunder Wave, U Turn, Wish, uh, Trick. You know, it was it's just a fantastic Pokemon for me to pick up, especially with the move set it has. And it was definitely one of the better mons I picked up in the bye week. Not to say the Girder and Venomoth weren't good, but I think Zatu was definitely the best of those three picks, and it definitely Sean in the battle against Swishy, able to stop that Skarmory every single time. And um, Zatu was great. And it's cool because Zatu is a Pokemon that I do really, really like. And I do think it gets a lot of uh, flack for not having the best stats. Um, because, let's be honest, 95 Special Attack is great, but it's, it's just not up there. 95 Speed is great, but it's just not up there. Its defenses aren't great. Its attack is unusable. Um, but with a life orb, it definitely was able to do some work, and I think it can be used defensively if brought the right set. Uh, Zatu was great, and I'm really, really happy. I really like Zatu. I think it gets a lot of unfair abuse uh, from people just because of its stats, but its moveset really, really does make up for it, in my opinion. Uh, next, we have Venomoth, who unfortunately has yet to make an appearance for the uh, Quirks Addictor Ladies. Now, I picked the Venomoth as a baton agility passer, uh, and I thought it would do great. Uh, unfortunately, there hasn't been a week where I've been able to bring it. I did bring it against Swishy, and it was ex I was expecting it to do a huge amount of work to Swishy, but it never hit the field, uh, which was unfortunate. It never needed to, which you know what? I'd rather it never have to hit the field than it hitting the field and dying, you know? I'd rather, I'd rather it be in the back scaring people. And a lot of people were like, yo, you can't use Quiver Dance Baton Pass. I'm like, calm down. I'm not. Don't worry about it. I'm not. Uh, so, Venomoth was very, very important uh, team building wise, giving me some confidence going into that match because against Wishy, Weezing was very, very scary. And because of Venomoth, I was definitely able to calm down and really just focus on the battle. And uh, I think Venomoth could come some week. We'll have to see. Um, but I don't see it coming against Orson and uh, Joey. Uh, definitely not Joey. Maybe against Orson, I'm not quite sure. Maybe in the finals, you know, if we play Craft, I guess it could do some kind of work being able to beat the Hoopa Unbound if I had speed it, if he doesn't choice Scarfish. Um, but I don't really see it coming, unfortunately. But it's, not, it's a nice Pokemon I have. I do like Venomoth. Um, next we have Golurk, who is by far the MVP of our battle against Frank. Unfortunately, Frank didn't have a lot of time to team prep. Um, he only had two or three days. Uh, so he didn't get a lot of time to really, really plan and uh, think about uh, what on my team beats him. And I don't think he definitely he definitely didn't prep enough for Golurk. He didn't expect it to do as much as work as it did. Um, he made a few misplays which allowed Golurk to get a few kills. But I think Golurk definitely was huge in that match. He able to get three kills. He set up with, at Swords Dance on with a Toxicroak on our Golurk, which was... Definitely weird, maybe he thought we were choice banded into Dynamic Punch, but when I went for Earthquake, we one shot it. Went to Zapdos, he sets up some agilities. I went for Substitute, he set up another agility. Ice Punch, dead. Went into Chansey at the end of the game, we were able to set up a Substitute. We blocked the Toxic because of that, and we were able to Dynamic Punch until the Chansey died. So, uh, Golurk was huge. I believe that's the only match it came, unfortunately. Uh, I do wish Golurk was able to come more weeks, uh, but unfortunately, uh, it did not. Uh, maybe in the playoffs it can come, which I do think there is a place for it somewhere that it can come in the playoffs, uh, but we'll have to see. Uh, next we have Girder, Juan Cena, who was very, very uh, pivotal in our match against Joey. I definitely misplayed it, but Girder definitely did huge. It's also huge against uh, Six Pads being able to stop the Lucario uh, in its tracks. 
being able to stop the Heatran and the Electros, especially being able to one-shot the Haunter on a swap in, which was absolutely incredible. Second turn, um, Six Blads makes a very, very bold play, goes on a Haunter on my Girder, knockoffs able to one-shot it, and uh, just right there, Girder cemented itself in the Quark Secret of these lineup. Uh, Girder was definitely huge for us, having a fighting type who can reliably swap in on status. Um, Alaric is the only other Mon, uh, besides Agron with uh, Toxic, uh, besides Sylveon with Heal Bell. Milotic was the only Mon that, like, you know, enjoys having a status. And I think Gerda was the other Mon on that team. Um, and that was very, very huge for us. And finally, we have Muck, Creep the Muck, uh, who came actually a lot of games. You know, it came against bloom it never had to hit the field uh thankfully against the venusaur I, I actually brought it for that venusaur as a way to block it uh because it actually did a lot of work to his team other than the jellicent who he did bring in the end so i'm glad that muck didn't have to hit the field um i brought it against zach i brought it against uh the aforementioned bloom i brought it against uh it was someone else i brought it against out of someone else I, i've lost it but um, I believe it was Source. No, 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 I wasn't Source. Uh, but I think I think Muck was huge in this season, um, and I think uh, he was definitely a man that was definitely a surprise to a lot of people that it did so well, uh, being able to get a few kills. Definitely misplayed it in a lot of games. But um, with that being said, I'm just gonna talk about my pr my uh, draft overall. I think our draft is good. I think our draft is good. I wouldn't say it's great. There are definitely a few flaws, uh, but I think the synergy between the main six. Is just fantastic you know uh, there's no type on our team that's uh, you know duplicated except for uh, flying on Dragonite and Zatu and poison on Muk and Venomoth I don't believe there's any other type that's uh, duplicated um, which doesn't really matter too much because they don't share a lot of the same weaknesses actually they do I don't know what I'm talking about but um, you know I think the Sylveon, Milotic, Agron core was huge. I think Dragonite being paired with them as a bulky dragon was really, really good. Superior being a fast grass type was huge. Uh, Helios with dry skin being able to eat up the water type attacks was huge. Being a fast electric type. Uh, Zatu being able to uh, block the Stealth Rocks later in the season against Squishy was huge. Uh, Golurk being a rapid spin blocker, even though he was never used as one, was huge. Girder being a more defensive Pokemon uh, with the Eviolite. Uh, and then Muk, uh, Girder, Dragonite, uh, they all have priority, which was really, really good. Dragonite with Extreme Speed, Girder with Mach Punch, and Muk with Shadow Sneak. I believe that's all the priority we had in our team. Uh, definitely, I, I do like our draft. It was great. It was good because I love Heatalisk. I love Agron. Agron is my favorite Pokemon. I love Dragonite. I love Milotic. I really like Zatu. I really like Golurk. I really like Venomoth. I really like, I like all these Pokemon. There's not a single Pokemon on this team that I don't like. You know, I love all these Pokemon. And the fact that I was able to use them in such a way that we made it to playoffs was just huge. And I'm very, very happy with how the season went. And uh, hopefully we don't lose in the playoffs, you know. I mean, the, the goal of this season was to make playoffs. Because as you guys know, this is my first league format. And the fact that we made playoffs, that was the end goal. That was the goal, to make playoffs. The fact we made it, it's done. You know what? We made it. We made uh, what I wanted to do. But I was, I'm like, we made playoffs. Why don't we just win at this stage? You know, why, why bother stopping? You know, let's just keep going. Let's keep focusing. Let's keep on this winning streak that we have. We beat Blue and we beat Swishy in uh, two very demanding fashion. So let's keep going. Let's make the finals. Let's make, uh, beat uh, the winner of the Magma Conference. And uh, you know what? Let's have some fun while we're doing it. Um, a few problems with my draft, I will address them right here. Not having a rapid spinner was very, very unfortunate. I had Claydol at the start, but I really, really felt like Claydol wasn't really doing a lot for our team, being able uh, to be set up fodder for a lot of Pokemon. Because it doesn't have Roar, it doesn't have Haze, it doesn't have Dragon Tail. Uh, which is why I think Agron and, uh, Dra sorry, Agron and Milotic was so good, because they both have Dragon Tail, and Agron has Roar. Uh, Sylveon, unfortunately, was a set up fodder th for the Lucario, in week uh, six, again, sorry, week seven against six pads, it was set up father for the Lucario, but it didn't actually end up mattering, thankfully. Um, and um, some of the we we have a bit of a ground weakness, I guess you could say, because Agron, you know, uh, sorry, Helisk, 
uh, muck. There's no mon that like reliably swaps in on ground types. And I know what you're thinking, you know, Dragonite and Zatu. We, most ground types have rock type moves, which is why Milotic was kind of our answer, which was really, really unfortunate because Milotic doesn't like taking a lot of, uh, like, a lot of attacks. Uh, the thing is about Milotic, it can take a lot of special attacks. It won't take a lot of physical attacks. It'll take a, a few, but it won't take a lot. And uh, unfortunately, it was uh, very, very uh, needed in our battles. And the battles that didn't come, obviously, like I said, um, it did, uh, you know, harm us. We, we, it definitely was unfortunate we didn't bring it. And I, de I definitely wish I brought it against Source and against Joey, against uh, Zach. Uh, no, it wasn't Zach. It was Zach? Did we bring Milotic against Zack? I cannot remember. I'm gonna stop. Um, so yeah, I, I do think our draft is good. Uh, I'm gonna talk about a few of the members that we did drop. You know, Machamp uh, never brought it, unfortunate. Snorlax brought it the first week, I believe, or the second week. Uh, wasn't using it. Uh, I'm not very good with using Snorlax, so I decided to give it up. Um, uh, what else? What else? Um, Claydol came uh, the first few weeks, didn't do great, decided to drop it. Mesprit never brought it, uh, can't say much on it. Uh, Hitmonlee, I uh, definitely misplayed it, that was definitely my fault. Hitmonlee is a great Pokemon, but I definitely uh, misused it. And I definitely could have used it better, but I don't have a lot of experience with using Hitmonlee. And uh, it was definitely misplayed, I'm not picking it up. I shouldn't have picked it up, I should have picked Girder in the first place. And, um,. Do I regret picking up Hitmonlee? No, because it was good experience, you know, it was good to know that Hitmonlee doesn't suit my style. And, uh, I'm glad overall that, um, you know, I'm, I'm glad overall that it happened. And, um, we're in playoffs, playoffs, baby. So, we are in playoffs, baby. I will see you guys on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, someday during the week for our battle against Sorosin. Uh, the Hurricane out of Lugia is our rematch. Uh, we lost against Sorosin in week 3, like I said. And uh, I'm definitely more confident going into this battle because I lost. Uh, now I know what he does, what his game plan is after seeing him over the weeks. If we beat Sorosin, we go uh, against Joey, which will be a very, very interesting battle because again, we lost to Joey and I do think we can beat Joey, but the team matchup is not in our favor, guys, like at all. It's a really, really unfortunate. Um, and then if we do, by some miracle, beat Joey, we will play either Kraft, our very, very good friend who's been helping us team build, for, uh, for, for some of the weeks. Um, we will play Zack, who we played week two, or we play Doric, who we've never played, which will be very, very interesting. So in two of those outcomes, um, we play Craft, we've never played Doric, we've never played. Uh, out of who I'd rather play, Doric or Craft, I'd rather play Craft because our team matchup against Doric is so ass. Mega Blastoise, Chiron Black, Talonflame. Uh, what else? Kling Clang and Vileplume. His team just messes us up, dude. It's so annoying. And um, I do think if we do play Doric, it'll be very, very tough for us to win. If we play Craft, it'll be very, very tough for us. If we play anyone, it's going to be tough for us to win. But you know what? We're here. Why bother stop? Uh, why stop uh, focusing on the end goal? Let's make playoffs. Fuck me. Let's make finals. I'm such a dumbass. Let's make finals. Let's go all the way. And let's prove that the Quark City Crillies are a force to be reckoned with. All the people that we're playing uh, until the finals, if we do make finals, we've lost to. So we definitely are the underdog going into this playoffs. And I hope we don't disappoint the Quark City Crillies fans. That's all for me. I guys you guys have enjoyed. Make sure to have the like button down below for us. If you like more videos like this, make sure to subscribe and become an Agronite today. With that being said, I'm going to get out of here. Have yourselves a good day. And I'm out. Peace.